Did you know that October is Circular Economy Month in Canada? I didn't know that. So I'm going to talk to uh, Joanne St. Goddard, who is the Executive Director of the Circular Innovation Council, and she's going to tell us about what activities her organization uh, is up to this month, and we'll talk about what uh, the circular economy actually is. So welcome to the interview, Joanne. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Well, like, you know, I hear a lot more about uh, the circular economy. And I just, as an example, uh, you know, electric vehicle batteries, there's a lot of concern about recycling. And and that seems to be a perfect example of, 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 of the circular economy, because you can take, you can recycle 95% of what's in a battery, and it goes back into being another battery. Is that kind of the approach we're taking here? Yeah, sort of. Um, I think, um, and I'm really glad that you've actually heard about the circular economy. It means that the term is starting to become sort of mainstream and socialized mm -hmm. uh, and kind of a, on a street, you know, the street term. Um, if effectively, to sort of take a step back, um, the circular economy is really the opposite of what we live in now, which is a long, linear economy, where we take resources um, generally, they tend to be the finite ones that we want to protect. Uh, we, of course, make them into products. We use those products and then we discard them. And sometimes um, we're able to actually recirculate those products and the materials that are part of them back into uh, new products uh, via recycling. Um, but unfortunately, uh, much of what we make and use is actually discarded and, and lost. Uh, those, those resources are actually lost. But the circular economy certainly includes recycling in our traditional way of thinking about it, but it actually takes a step back and looks more broadly at how we produce and consume, considering those finite resources and considering that when we do extract those resources, they are lost, um, their value is lost. There's implications to not only um, biodiversity and, and, and wildlife um, as we go and extract those resources. But in addition to that, it takes energy. Um, the process of extracting and production creates greenhouse gases. Um, and then of course, um, when we lose those resources to disposal, we lose the real value of those materials um, that could be used in more productive so certainly recycling is one aspect, but it is a broader um, economic change, if you will. And it means that we're, we're producing and consuming really within our planetary boundaries um, and within those finite resources that at the end of the day, we want to protect and, and, and keep in place as long as possible. Well, here's a question, and we'll, I want to ask this before we get into a discussion of what your organization is doing this month. But... Uh, I've often wondered why uh, vehicles, for example, are not made to be refurbished and parts replaced more easily. And uh, just this morning, I was reading about uh, Citroën, the, the, the famous uh, French automaker. They've got a concept SUV called the Ollie, of all things. It's kind of an, an odd looking little thing, but the, a lot of the, uh, the, the idea behind the, the concept SUV is that a lot of it can be replaced and refurbished. And there are things like um, uh, recycled uh, materials that are made that, that make up body panels, for example, instead of steel. And the idea is that you could keep this you know, vehicle on the road for decades, literally, just by replacing parts on it. And, and I wonder, you know, is that part of the circular economy? And, and are we starting to see automakers and other companies uh, embrace the idea of the circular economy? Yeah, that's a great example. Um, the automobile sector has come a long way in their thinking, and, and, and that design that you've just described is indeed um, sort of the pinnacle, I would say, of a circular economy where you're considering the value of the vehicle longer term. And so, you know, rather than sort of sell the vehicle and walk away as a brand or a company, you want a different kind of relationship with your consumer and vice versa. The consumer is going to have a different kind of relationship with you where there, it's longer term, of course, and you're deriving more value out of that vehicle because you're giving it longer life through repair, through refurbishment, and hopefully through resale ultimately. Um, and in fact, you're seeing the automobile industries and other industries 
uh, employ what's called product as a service. Um, and that concept is one of the key circular economy business models. So it's starting to really, it's very innovative and it's starting to really take hold. And that is that you recognize that really what you don't want is a car. What you want is to get from A to B. The value of that asset, if you'd call it that product, is transportation. It's not the car itself. And so we're seeing some of those companies that are recognizing product as a service is really a new model um, where they are giving you access to that vehicle. So it kind of looks like leasing or renting, but in fact, the, 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 the brand holder, the company keeps ownership of the car. Um, they give you access to that vehicle for a period of time. It could be through a subscription, it could be through a membership, it, or it could be through a lease. And then you, you use that vehicle for the purposes that it's intended and for the value of you, uh, that you want it, again, that transport. And then you give the car right back to that brand holder. And those materials, um, uh, the reason why that really works and why it's part of a circular economy is because um, uh, the, the brand holder itself considers that vehicle their possession. Um, they are interested in trying to find a way to recirculate the materials part of that vehicle back into the production of a new vehicle so they value it differently. Um, and in fact, the relationship is elongated usually and, and, and is much more... Um, there's a lot more loyalty between the consumer and the brand holder. So it's an interesting profitable business model, uh, but it also means that we have a, a vehicle that um, is really, you know, we're deriving the best value out of it. And in fact, um, can be recirculated back into the economy. Yeah, I interviewed a, a California company um, just last month that is has launched a subscription service, and they're buying you know like twenty five thousand Teslas, and and that's kind of the approach that they'll maintain ownership of it. They'll sub, you know, subscribe to that to get to get a to get a Tesla, and then they hope that those Teslas will go for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles, get new batteries on them, get new you know whatever wears out gets gets replaced, so you get a, a long life. And that gives the they that's where they make their money, and that's where the lower price comes in, in part, uh, for the subscriber. Okay, uh, well now we we have a better idea of what a circular economy is. What's your organization doing this month to raise awareness, and where can can viewers get more information uh, about what uh, what a circular economy is and what they can do? Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, so my organization is a non-for-profit organization who's really our, our mantra, our mandate is to accelerate the transition towards a circular economy. And so the first place to start is really educating Canadians um, and citizens um, to understand better what it is. How is it different from a linear economy, the model that we're working under now, and why is it important? And how it is it directly linked to, again, mentioned uh, protecting our natural resources, uh, protecting biodiversity, reducing our carbon emissions, reducing our waste, all of that linked to some of the crises environmentally that we're living under now. And we've all seen recent, you know, effects of climate change, um, you know, so directly. Um, so uh, our organization is taking this first step in, in really uh, planting a flag, if you will, in October to make it the circular economy month, um, to protect time in our calendars, time in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our lives, to really understand um, the circular economy, what it is, what its benefits are, um, but also how companies, how governments and how citizens alike can participate and to support its transition and its acceleration. And so circulareconomymonth.ca is really the storefront, if you will, for the campaign. During the week, we are dividing the month into four different weeks. In those weeks, we are um, promoting different themes, again, to grow understanding and to help um, uh, uh, participants understand um, the multiple dimensions of what's part of a circular economy. Um, we start with just socializing the term, um, uh, explaining broadly what it is and its benefits. Um, in other weeks, we describe its connection to carbon reduction and climate change. We certainly um, support Waste Reduction Week as the third week, and that we've had Waste Reduction Week as a campaign for some time. And so in that week, we talk about um, natural resources, the benefits 
benefits of recycling, um, why it's important for consumers to think about um, the circular economy at the point of purchase, not just how they participate in recycling programs. And then in the final week, we, we really focus and emphasize the social benefits. And this is about thinking about how we value the things we buy and who we buy them from. So how is that connected to our uh, uh, goals of buying local, um, of supporting um, uh, uh, Indigenous and uh, uh, disenfranchised uh, um, uh, populations as well. So there is a social aspect to our environmental impacts that sometimes we don't talk about enough. And so we're dedicating the fourth week to talk about that theme. So it's really about education. It's about promotion. That's a starting point for the 2022 year um, and providing some good information and resources and tools on that storefront to help people get involved. Um, and we've recognized that, um, you know, in order to engage and excite people about this, we have to give them the tools and the know-how of how to participate and feel good about that participation. So we give them, as part of the campaign, um, uh, tricks, hints, tips, um, about how to make really cha small changes in, in, in our lifestyles that collectively over time are going to make the difference. Well, Joanne, thank you very much for this. Good luck with your promotion during October. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you uh, at next year's uh, Circular Economy Month. Thank you. I look forward to that. Thank you.